doesn't like blatantly admit towards GH use, right? I will get to that later in the interview, but GH 110% could exacerbate cancer. What is up everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907, 1907wire.com coupon code Russo. ASMR Spritz Intelligent Elephant Carbon Code Russo Young LA for this pimp jacket Today I'm going to be reacting to Dolph Lundgren Who is one of the OG action movie stars Andrew, remember when like, you know, males were males in movies And like the older generation got all these actual superheroes and stuff Not what there is today Well, Dolph is one of the OG villains You know, he played the Russian super soldier in Rocky That's what I know him for But this was a little bit before my time But recently it was brought to my attention That he sat down and did an interview Where he pins his cancer on his steroid and HGH use And I wanted to comment on that and first off i'm gonna be completely based here i'm obviously pro peds but that doesn't mean you won't pay the reaper for the extra power so just want to get that off the bat but the interview is by graham bensinger so you can check out his channel if you want to see the full interview because they discuss more than just gear on this this is you know towards the later half of it 1979 so he was a bit wrong i mean i i did last another last another 45 years what, what about uh steroids steroids yeah i tried steroids back in the 80s 90s i don't know if that's anything to do with so dolph tried steroids in the 80s 90s you know, I just wanted to paint this that, you know, the steroids gave him the superhero physique, which allowed him to garner the fame, wealth, status that he accumulated over his lifetime career. So I assume that, you know, Rocky, all of them were using steroids at the time. So it was keeping up with the competition. The cancer, of course, it, it struck me as it could have had something to do with it. Is that something you've really thought about? I thought about it because you always think that you've made a mistake in your health, you know, healthcare while you get cancer. Like maybe it's only me, but you kind of, kind of blame yourself to some degree. So I think everyone blames themselves to a certain degree of like, oh, why did I take this? Why did I do that? I never knew later in life or I would have a reaction of this sort to this medication. But in reality, steroids were developed for people with cancer to help with muscle wasting. So there's that side of steroids. That doesn't mean that they could have caused a switch or predisposed a condition that was already going to happen in his life and made it worse and actually the cancer got away from him from that that could be a theory but he later talks about gh use which he doesn't like blatantly admit towards gh use right i will get to that later in the interview but gh 110 percent could exacerbate cancer it's kind of odd that you know he has cancer all these years and he says that he did steroids in his like 20s to 30s for the movie roles and then you know it seems like he got off did he get off we don't know did he go on trt and gh probably did the gh play a role in growing that cancer giving a gasoline to spread quicker we don't know did the steroids cause some sort of switch that aligned him to something he was predisposed to and experienced it at a worse rate that the immune system couldn't fend it off we don't know but for someone to go back two three decades and pin it on steroids it makes me wonder was he using gh all that time how long was he using gh therapy and what were the dosages used in gh therapy because anything above two iu is dangerous right that's just straight up one to two iu is pushing it right the max you can get out of your pituitary if you use secretagogues and exogenously stimulate it is two iu you know normally you're producing about one point something IU if you're a stout athletic guy like Dolph so if he was going three to four IUs for anti-aging which is an anti-aging then I could see that being an issue agree for it but you know I think maybe testosterone there's some connection to testosterone therapy and HGH you know, growth hormone therapy and cancer okay so HGH growth hormone therapy doesn't directly admit to growth hormone therapy although we can connect the dots here we're all smart that Dolph was probably using some growth hormone he's a celebrity he wants to maintain his young looking skin and everyone around him is probably running GH therapy if he was predisposed to cancer and or had cancer and added GH in he just dumped gas 
Vaseline on all that cancer because growth hormone is all about hyperplasia, cell replication. So if you have cancer cells that are rapidly replicating, guess what? You're fucking replicating them even faster, spreading it faster, exacerbating the issues. Do I think steroids played a role in that? could potentially but i heavily would point the finger at the gh even in a low dosage right people think low oh, gh is fine like it's only fucks you up if you take six ius or above no no it can fuck you up at like two ius one iu is like okay right one i use in that optimal crazy natty reference range anything above two i use you're in acromegaly i'll have andrew throw up acromegaly territory and if you had cancer going on if you were predisposed to get cancer it's just going to cause it to be even more drastic than it should and i always use the argument andrew of there's some grandma out there who's been smoking cig since the beginning of time and they're all unfiltered cigs and if you scanned her she'd have no cancer so certain people sadly are predisposed to issues other people are not if this were the case how is dorian yates i'll have andrew throw up the age of dorian yates walking around healthy and downsized right now dorian yates is like pretty much the poster boy for pushing the gear the peds performance enhancers to the new limit and dolph over here was not doing any of that shit dolph was probably using i assume trt hrt but that gh therapy even at a low dose is what i suspect could have played a role in the severity of the cancer there's some people um but i you know i was on steroids when i was younger and for a while and for how long on and off maybe for um 10 years maybe between like mid 80s rocky till about mid 90s i would say but depending on the kind of movie i made mm -hmm. if it was very physical i mean maybe i'll do more or you know but it, it wasn't like i was doing i mean i heard of the real bodybuilders how much they do like like testosterone you can do 150 milligrams a week and it's quite a bit that's maybe what I would do. But I hear guys are doing 1,000, 1,200 milligrams a week and anabolic steroids on top of it. I just stopped doing it because it wasn't really... I stopped doing movies where I took my shirt off in every scene. So at the end, he's like, well, I didn't use bodybuilder dosages. With the steroids, that's fine. But with the GH, <laughs> there's no safe way to do GH. I'm, I'm like kind of tired of like, when you do GH, that is weighing and rolling the dice. That's weighing and rolling the dice. Anything above one IU theoretically could cause issues, right? We have the King of Macedonia at Alec Matrivsky, right? His jaw grew on two IUs of GH. The jaw muscle grew. His mom is a dentist and was measuring his jaw. You know, Alec had this perception that, oh, you don't get GH side effects unless you do like four IUs and above, and I'm not doing four to six, I'm just gonna do one to two IUs. His jaw grew. Imagine if he had cancer tumors. Those are gonna grow just like the rest of you. So if you are predisposed, that runs in your family, cancer runs in your family, messing in the growth hormone pathway, you are rolling the dice. Do I think steroids really played a role in his cancer? No. Could it theoretically cause some gene thing and like predispose them more, or set them down the wrong path? Yeah. But when I hear that he was doing growth hormone therapy, that makes me, you know, point the finger at that. He was probably predisposed and that just gave the cancer gasoline to get out of control and the immune system lost the fight. And you know, that's how it ended. I do want to summarize at the end that Dolph got a prognosis by a doctor that gave him a couple months to live, Andrew, I think. It was like a year or two years max, he said. And Dolph was like heartbroken, you know, tell the family he's about to go, da da da. Got a second diagnosis. That doctor actually gave a fuck, figured out his cancer. He is now cancer free. So when you're dealing with cancer, I actually wanted to make a black pill video about one of my favorite cancer doctors. I'll actually have Andrew throw up his name if you guys want to search him. But I don't I don't want to take the heat of doing anything more than showing his name. You always want to get a second second opinion with cancer right you can't go off one opinion and it's it's a system the western medical system is a system in which you might not get the right doctor on the first time that doesn't mean that there isn't a doctor out there that truly gives a fuck and can beat your cancer i'll leave you with this name to research if you guys are bored and want to learn some things about cancer i'll see you guys in my next video